for anyone who's unaware, haptic uh, feedback is uh, where basically where you integrate an actuator into a piece of electronic equipment and uh, it causes that piece of equipment to shake. Uh, and of course, we're, most people are familiar with this from smartphones, uh, even going back to the days of, uh, of pagers. Um, and so the idea is that it gives us tactile feedback and, and you know, uh, one place we see this really being used more is with uh, capacitive touch. Uh, capacitive touch, of course, has become very popular over the last five years, but one of the downsides of capacitive touch is that it, um, it unlike a mechanical button, when you push a mechanical button, you feel this uh, tactile feedback. The button goes in and maybe it, it hits bottom or it snaps and clicks into place. But these things don't happen with capacitive touch, especially when we're talking about a discrete button. Um, and so the human brain kind of likes that feedback. It kind of likes to know that, that something happened. And, and worse than that, with capacitive touch, if, if the user doesn't get that feedback, they may think something did, it didn't happen right, and so they press it a second time, and then they can create user error. Um, so, so haptics, we see haptics as really being a, 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 a good solution to that problem. Um, unfortunately, until now, it was really kind of only available to uh, for example, smartphone smartphone vendors, and uh, uh, what we've done with with uh, with our solution is that we've worked with the Merchant Corporation, which is the leader in, in the haptics uh, industry, and we've created uh, what we call the MSP430 TCH5E microcontroller. So this is an MSP430, and therefore it's ultra low power. Um, but uh, we've we've done that, and we have a software library called the MSP430 Haptics Library. And uh, we've, we've basically made haptics accessible uh, to, to anyone. And uh, to do that, then also we to demonstrate that we've created this haptouch booster pack. And so we have here uh, this booster pack, and it's in the format of a game controller. And uh, you can play video games. Uh, you can go uh, online. You can find a wide variety of video games. You can even use it to run your PowerPoint presentations. You can use it to turn slides. It's very versatile. Um, it's uh, basically just a good way to demonstrate the solution. There's probably three or four answers I would give to that. One is because uh, haptics is a very patent-driven uh, market, it's very it's, it's hard to do haptics without infringing on that IP. So uh, in the past, smartphone vendors would get their own licenses uh, to license the technology, but that's not something that most customers are able to do. And so what we've done is we've taken care of the licensing uh, for you, and all you have to do is design your system around the TCH5e, and there's no added fees, there's no uh, there's no licensing you have to do, you simply buy the, the device and, and build it. Um, so that's probably the, one of the biggest things about it. We also work with LRA sense, or sorry, LRA actuators, which is linear resonant actuator. Um, this is one of the successors to the older ERM actuators, the old uh, eccentric rotating mass. We do work with ERM, but we also work with LRA, and so that's a difference from uh, other solutions. Uh, we're, in, we're a programmable solution. It's fully programmable, and, and one of the advantages of this is you can fold in other functionality that's unique to your application, and so this allows you to save costs because you're able to, to pull in other things into this one device. And uh, finally, the, the, the haptics effects we're talking about are not just a simple buzz. It's a very sophisticated solution with 122 possible effects. And then we enable you to chain those effects into sequences, and so you can create complex sequences like we provide an example called Machine Gun, which basically acts like a machine gun. And also like rolling dice and other kinds of effects. And so you can find it in a sequence that mimics what you're trying to accomplish. Of course, we have the booster pack itself, the hardware. Um, we also have a software developer's kit that goes with that. The software developer's kit includes a, a fully functional turnkey library for haptics. Um, it also includes uh, all the, the cap our, our capacitive touch library uh, because it combines the functionality of capacitive touch and haptics into one and then it has the application on top of that. Uh, we also have tools to help you in your development. So we have the haptouch GUI which lets you build your own haptic sequences. Um, you know, like I said, the machine gun and the rolling dice, you can do uh, it's a very creative process, and so the GUI helps you do that. Uh, and then, of course, we have the Touch Pro GUI for capacitive touch. So we have a variety of tools. Well, the great thing is, is that uh, Haptics is only now starting to move out of the cell phone space and out of the smartphone space into other applications, and so there, there's a there's a growing market. I would probably give two categories of answers to that question. One is anywhere where you're doing capacitive touch, there's an opportunity, uh, or, or it should be considered of whether to do haptics, because again, like we said before, when you're touching those buttons, 
uh, there's, there's no feedback and so haptics is a good way to solve that problem. Uh, so I think it's good to look in those spaces for these applications, but the other place, and what I think is probably more exciting, is the things you can do now that we have haptics that you couldn't do without haptics. And so I'll give two examples of that. Um, one is uh, we know somebody that's embedding haptics actuators into the soles of shoes so that blind people can wear these shoes and so as they navigate their space, um, you know, you can have sensors that maybe sense the environment and then provide that information real time to the person wearing the shoes and, and, and uh, uh, it can help them figure out where to go. And, and the great thing is with this solution we have with these, all these effects and sequences, it's not just a straight buzz, you can have different kinds of effects. So in this application, that really comes into play because now you can tell the, the wearer of the shoes different things with different effects. Uh, another example is a surgeon who's wielding a scalpel or some kind of medical tool in real time, you know, while he's navigating uh, you know, the space that the surgeon is in, then he can actually um, you know, get feedback as he's going and make sure that you know, he, can, he can use that to guide what he's doing. So I think that's an example of two interesting applications that would not, you can maybe do them in other ways, but it's more of a natural experience with happens.